Assalamu alaikum. I am Maria Rada from APS Civil Street. I welcome you all to the first lesson of the first session of Pakistan Studies. Before formally starting our today's lesson, let us share something regarding Pakistan Studies. How many of you are having goosebumps when you listen about the subject Pakistan Studies? Because there are people who welcome the Pakistan Studies, the subject is something very really rough. That is only related to um, sharpening of memory, in which the subjects can be the lessons, the topics can only be completed, can only be memorized on the basis of growth learning. Rata system. Yes, I admit it is for those who consider Pakistan series as a matter of today's learning. Although this is very long lasting learning. If we see a part of this ideology, the, a part of this sharpening of memory and uh, word learning, this is the condition Pakistan studies is a boring subject for those who want to sit in exam to pass the test, either for a period of one month or for a, for a period of one day. But Pakistan studies is much more than this concept. Like, I am going to discuss two points here in case of sentimental feeling. We give the title of motherland to Pakistan. If we, this is something very respectable title. If we entitle Pakistan as motherland, so we should be aware of its likeness, dislikeness, sufferings, different days of celebration, different events. Beyond this sentimental um, aspect, Pakistan studies is one of the subjects that will support you in the competitive exam. For this, I agree. This is Pakistan studies is language of facts, figures, maps, events, incidents. It can be done. It is easy. It is, um, it is not based on road learning. If we relate the events with any of the events of our family, with any events of our life, in this way, for this purpose, we need to be inquisitive. We must be analytical to analyze, to link the situations. Now, in today's session, we need to cover Zulfiqar Ali Bhutto's era, election 1970, violence in East Pakistan, Bhutto's reforms in terms of nationalization of industries, labor, agricultural, educational, health, and constitutional reforms. Dear learners, at the end of today's lesson, you will be able to construe the setup of Zulfiqar Ali Bhutto's era, seeking the analyze Bhutto's reforms with advantages and disadvantages. Before going towards the main topics, it is time to flash back slightly quick review of the uh, precedent aspects. Decade of development. Decade means 10. 10 years of development. You will link this with which personality who ruled Pakistan. Ask yourself. Yes, General Ayub Khan. He was the person who ruled for almost 10 years and on 25th March 1969 under the duress of public protest. He resigned from his office and he handed over the government to General Yahya Khan. General Yahya Khan then announced the election. As a result of that election, whatever is there, we are going to discuss in the subsequent slides. So again, I say, at the re as a result of that election, Zulfiqar Ali Bhutto's party came as a leading party. And Pakistan People's Party was founded on 30th November 1967. Zulfiqar Ali Bhutto's regime in Kuwait started from 25th December. 1971 to 5th July 1977. Till from 1971 till 1973, Zulfiqar Ali Bhutto was having the office of president. He was president of Pakistan, the fourth president of Pakistan. Whereas from 1973 till 1977, he was the ninth prime minister of Pakistan under the presidentship of Chaudhary Fazal Iwaki. The expected election was uh, supposed to be in October 1970, helplessly, um, unfortunately. East 
Pakistan faced severe threat. On 12th November 1970, it was on the abysmal point. It started prior to some months regarding November. Therefore, election was it is supposed to be it was decided to be on 7 December 1970. As a result of that election, in West Pakistan, Pakistan People's Party under the headship of Zulfikar Ali Bhutto came ahead, whereas in West Pakistan, Sheikh Mujibur Rahman under the uh, party of Awami League just uh, succeeded. And if you put a glance uh, towards the main, in between India, out on both sides of India, West Pakistan, today's Pakistan, and East Pakistan, today's Bangladesh. The sitting arrangement like uh, West Pakistan 138 seats, East Pakistan 162 seats. This sitting arrangement was based on the Muhammad Ali Bogras formula. Before Muhammad Ali Bogras formula, two other reports were compiled for the constitution of Pakistan, but that reports just prone to the um, protest of Bengalis because Bengals, uh, Bengalis, the East Pakistanis population was suppressed, was ignored in the two reports. The seating arrangements were on the basis of parity, equal basis. As a result of the protest of Bengalis, Muhammad Ali Bogra on 7th of October 1954, he made, he presented his formula and by the name of Muhammad, Muhammad Ali's form. In that formula, 50 seats for the upper house was designated. Out of that 50 seats, 10 seats were specified for East Pakistan. 40 seats were designated for West Pakistan. And 300 seats for the National Assembly. So this 138, 162, it, these are the seats of National Assembly, not the upper house, the lower house. So out of 300, 135 seats were specified for West Pakistan and 164 seats were specified for the East Pakistan. And in Muhammad Ali Bogra's formula, this was the point that president, it means the cover, rather president is not a suitable word to use now in 1954 because in 1954, the general, this time, privilege. So, Muhammad Ali Bogra formula says that if Governor General belongs to um, West Pakistan, so East Pakistan Prime Minister should be present. So, this is something which we will link with the next topic for right uh, now. Sitting arrangement from East pa West Pakistan, Pakistan People's Party having the support of 44%, the mutual support of same, 41% of Punjab's population supported. 14% of NWFP, this is not the time to use KPK instead of NWFP. We will discuss it in the um, second lesson. And hardly 2% of the Balochistan's population supported Pakistan People's Party. Now, violence in East Pakistan started. Why violence? Because from the beginning, from 1947, East Pakistanis, Bengalis, they were having grudge in the heart. They were having medias of complaints on the basis of language disparity, economic disparity, political disparity. Political disparity because Muhammad Ali Bokra clearly said in his formula that Governor General from West Pakistan, Prime Minister from East Pakistan. If Prime Minister from West Pakistan, then Governor General should be from East Pakistan. But this thing was not further because in the history of Pakistan, two Bengalis came in the few decades, in the starting few decades, Skandar Mirza and Hussein Shaheed Sohrawardi. So this was another grievance in case of flood. The India, in order to pour oil in troubled waters, just rendered its assistance to West Pakistan to help East Pakistanis at the time of flood. But West Pakistan strongly refused the help of India. This was another grudge that with the passage of time, each complaints, each grudge of East Pakistanis rolled itself and emerged in 1971 in a way that as a result of election, Sheikh Mujibur Rahman demanded self-government. But there was postponement, procrastination of West Pakistan in the formation of new government. As a result, 
These Pakistanis, the Bengalis, they started civil disobedience. In order to release this civil disobedience, the um, members of West Pakistan, like Zulfiqar Ali Bhutto and General Yahya Khan, they were having talks with Sheikh Mujibur Rahman. But unluckily, um, all the sessions just went up in smoke it, as there was no result. In order to crush the rebellion, West Pakistan's government started operation in East Pakistan. As a result of that operation, East Pakistanis, Bengalis, they, some of them ran away to India. This was the golden opportunity for India to add fuel to fire. So India interrupted in the war with the support of Russia, whereas Pakistan's supporters, China and US, they were silent. As a result of war of 1971, Pakistan unfortunately lost one of its strengths in the form of East Pakistan. And today that part is uh, present, that part appears on the world map under the title of Bangladesh in December 1971. Now when Bhutto came in government, he reformed uh, many aspects. The first one is nationalization of industries. Nationalization is the process in which um, there is a um, transfer of industries from the private ownership and just bring it under the control of state, under the control of government. Now in 1971, Pakistan 60% of industrial assets and 80% of insurance business were owned by 22 families, the capitalist 22 families. Due to which, on 2nd January 1972, there was issuance of ordinance on behalf of government for nationalization of 10 heavy industries. It included cement industry, automobile industry, consumer goods industry, chemical industry, steel industry, Heavy electrical equipment industry, petroleum industry, besides uh, um, social welfare industry. Social welfare means the industry that is working for the betterment for the welfare of masses, common public. It came in the form of education, shelter, as well as we can say the construction, the establishment of um, amusement, the parks, etc. The purpose is that Zulfiqar Ali Bhutto thought. Um, behind the wall of nationalization. This was the control of industrial output by proper investment. When the government makes proper investment, the view, the purpose, the target could be the selected, the decided production of industries. Secondly, salaries were increased. As a result of increase in salary, investment, let's see step by step. Investment increased, Production increased. Production increase just uh, gives birth to give birth to um, salary increment. That salary increment raised the standard of living and working of workers, and it uh, portrayed certain advantages. Like as uh, I earlier said, salary increment. There were, uh, was decrease in the strikes, discouragement of 22 capitalist families. And inflation decreased by 6%. Inflation means the rise in the general price level. Whereas nationalization proved itself as a mixed blessing because it had disadvantages as well. Is the um, capable factory owners were replaced by civil servants, those who were having no or like less experience. So it resulted the production. Secondly, the social welfare procedures, the process, nationalization, all this investment resulted in the increase in government's expenditure. And lastly, corruption was willing to boost. Secondly, labor reforms. Bhutto announced for the setup of administrative committee. That committee was responsible for the factory affairs. And out of this, out of the members of administrative committee, 20% membership was the representation from the labor's representatives. The salary bonuses were announced, 
one month salary was announced besides um, certain other bonuses in case of increase in production. And the working hours were rescheduled, rather it was decreased. Moreover, old age pension, insurance, and gratuity. Gratuity is the total sum amount of money given to the worker after retirement. Medical, residential, and educational facilities, which ch one child of each labor was considered to get free education from the beginning to the matriculation. Post of stewardship was announced. The steward was supposed to deal the problems between mill owners and laborers, so that uh, termination, the firing of labor without any rational reason, could not be. The advantages were in the form of increased output and worker security. See, worker security in terms of pension, bonus. Uh, insurance, gratuity, again all these factors just uh, increased, escalated the expenditure of government in the form of disadvantage. The third one, the two's agricultural reforms. In agricultural reforms, the foremost one was the ceiling fixed for individual holdings. Ceiling means the maximum limit that a person can hold in the form of land. So that ceiling was 150 acres for irrigated land, 300 acres for unirrigated land. Irrigated land means a part of a land that is watered with the help of artificial sources. Let's say canal system. Unirrigated means land that is watered with the help of natural means. For instance, rainfall. And this 150 and 300, uh, this two were 500,000 in the regime in the ruling period of General Ayub Khan. Secondly, land and water tax were um, fixed to be paid by the landlords, whereas the peasants, the poor farmers were exempted from these two taxes. And thirdly, if you can you just cast a glance on the map, on the picture, picture of land, different parts of land, one part with farming, one part without farming. So this is fragments of land. One fragment belongs to one person, second belongs to the another person. It resulted in um, diversified benefits. So first, government of Zulfiqar Ali Bhutto did the combination of this lens, combine the fragments, the pieces of land, and, the, and gave it the name of consolidation. This was positive step. Lastly, financial aid and loans were provided for the purchase of machines. In terms of loans, the loans were for, um, on easy installments. That even a poor peasant with less education could have access with that loans. The agricultural reforms, like consolidation of land, the ceiling, the taxes, the aids, the norms, it resulted in the source of income, source of earning for the poor persons. Tax exemption, com combining the fragments, the pieces of land, this could prove to be a source of income for the poor farmers. In terms of disadvantage, this rules like uh, fixation of the acres could be misused, could be exploited by the big land owners. They could purchase land in the name of for their family members. Again, Pakistan could be moving towards the same past mistake that gave birth to the 22 capitalist families. Now it's time to discuss Bhutto's educational reforms. Bhutto emphasized on providing education to all. That education should be for all. And secondly, school curriculum should be designed in a way that could uh, make one able now to cope with the social, economic, and political issues in future. It's there uh, some advantages in the form of increase in scholarships. Institutions were upgraded. 
training sessions for teachers were arranged. Again, in the form of mixed blessing, educational reforms, it resulted in a burden on the national treasury for the government in the form of upgradation of private institutions, in the form of the expenditure of scholarships, uh, training sessions, all these um, aspects. Secondly, there was the concept of student union as well. So this was a prey to the placid and uh, um, environment and security because student union could uh, fulfill the demand by the help of protest as well. So this thing some, uh, was something that sort of democracy is so it is a case of danger for the country, for the government. Now the chose health reforms. There was establishment of rural health centers in villages, like rural world signifies. There was setup of basic health units in urban areas and training colleges for doctors and nurses were established for the uh, promotion of the knowledge. And the last is the Bhutto's constitutional re reforms. There was announcement of a new constitution, rather the permanent constitution of Pakistan. This topic, this reform we are going to discuss inshallah in the second lesson. So whatever the questions you are having, just jot down in the um, comment. Now it's time to go with the home assignment. These two questions. And I'm looking forward to get your assignments. If there is any difficulty, just mention in the comment so that we, um, I, am a, I will be able enough to clarify. Wish you best of luck. Thank you.